Well, hello and welcome to Unleashed. I'm Carl Metzler and this week we're talking bird dogs and field trials with the folks at the Southern Bird Hunters Association. If you don't know anything about pointing dogs or field trials, or even if you do, I think you'll enjoy this look into the tradition, culture, and dogs that make up this sport. We're at the SBHA Futurity and Puppy Classic in South Carolina this week on Unleashed. There are over 86 million dogs in the United States, but only a select few are considered elite working or sporting dogs. From police and military canines to hunting and sporting dogs and everything in between, meet the dogs your dog aspires to be. Get ready to see man's best friend in a whole new light. This is Unleashed. Marty Robinson. Uh, I'm president of Southern Bird Hunters Association. I'm from Carrollton, Georgia. I've uh, been field trialing for 50 years now. When I was born, my dad was a bird hunter, so I've been walking behind uh, bird dogs since I was uh, big enough to get out in the yard and uh, put a lasso on one and, and uh, lead it around as my horse. But uh, as soon as I could uh, walk, uh, enough, my dad would let me walk with him bird hunting, and then as I got uh, of age to uh, carry a shotgun, I, I got to carry a shotgun. So it's really been something that's been instilled in me all my life. I have, uh, my field trial string is, uh, is entirely English pointers. Uh, growing up bird hunting, I always had, uh, I would keep English setters and English pointers. I'd always typically hunt a pair. Uh, one of each, and I always enjoyed that. I like all breeds of pointing dogs because they're also different in a lot of their characteristics. But when I started, uh, when the bird population went away in Georgia and I, I moved from bird wild quail hunting to field trialing, uh, the majority of the dogs running in field trials, participating, and winning were the English pointers. So I navigated to the English pointer and I've been there ever since. The most interesting thing and, and the thing that I enjoy most about uh, bird dogs and uh, bird hunting and field trialing uh, is a dog, is developing a dog, uh, is, is taking a dog as a puppy and seeing, seeing the personality come out in the dog, working with the dog, and just seeing that dog's natural abilities progress uh, from uh, just being able to get out and run and, and its curiosity to uh, chasing uh, little birds around, uh, uh, which evolves to uh, being able to point quail by scent. And, and then the, as it ages, uh, the breaking process, to see the dog mentally put it all together. And then when the mental uh, preparedness and the physical preparedness comes together, uh, these are just some uh, extremely smart, intelligent, uh, and athletic animals. And when you really see it from the beginning to the end, it's, it's just such an incredible process uh, in developing those natural God-given abilities. Okay, we're, at, we're currently at the uh, Southern Bird Hunters Association uh, Futurity and Puppy Classic. And, and also uh, the Open Shooting Dog Classic uh, was held earlier. It's one of the bigger events we have every year, but the Futurity is a breeder's event, and it's really exciting to see when someone breeds a litter, they're, you know, they, they are able to register that litter into the Futurity, and then the puppies from that litter are eligible to run in the Futurity. So it's, it's really meant to, you know, it's the purpose of it is to recognize not just the dog and the handler, but also recognize the breeder. Uh, SBHA, uh, we have uh, in excess of 30 trials a year, both horseback and walking. It's one of the, one of the things that differentiates SBHA from other organizations as there's, there's not many organizations that, have, that offer both walking and horseback trialing. And uh, you know, when we developed uh, 
SBHA, uh, we decided we're going to be a field trial organization and, and uh, we're open uh, to any aspect of field trial and if someone wants to run a field trial, uh, provided it's run by the acceptable guidelines, uh, they can run uh, a trial under our banner uh, of pretty much any, any nature that's typically run. For your active dog, not just any dog food will do. It takes special care and nutrition to support their energy to work and play. That's why we made Kinetic Performance Dog Food. Each Kinetic formula is made with three animal proteins and no fillers like corn, wheat, or soy. This lets you feed less and still get more energy, faster recovery, and better weight maintenance. If health and performance matter to you, give Kinetic a try. We build it for our dogs, but you'll love it for yours. When it comes to elite canine and handler training, the best of the best turn to one place, Von Lick Kennels. Von Lick is the premier full-service canine training center and detection service provider in the world. Their world-renowned training methods and experienced training staff produce the best canine and handler training available anywhere. When only the best will do, join over 5,000 law enforcement, government, and civilian agencies who count on Von Lick Kennels. Uh, the SBHA, uh, we're in our second season now, and uh, uh, it was an organization started to really take a fresh look at field trialing and uh, really focus on all the positive aspects of field trialing. Making sure that everybody has a fair shake, that everything is run uh, by the set of uh, values and in the, in, in the sportsman-like culture that, that was uh, has been part of the sport since inception and uh, we just wanted to make sure that uh, that's what we focus on that everything we do uh, is positive there's always been a pipeline if you will in this sport uh, we you know we had bird hunters that would really get interested in the dogs that would move to, a lot of times to walking type trials and then later on move to horseback trials Explaining field trials to someone that doesn't know anything about it uh, can be a little difficult if they if they really don't know anything about pointing dogs. Explaining uh, first of all what a pointing dog uh, does, how they how they utilize scent to point game, and then how the game of field trialing works of having uh, two dogs in a brace, what a brace means, what a stake means, and the differences between the stakes. There's a lot of components. Uh, but the ultimate purpose of a field trial, is, it's all about the dog. It's all about uh, how we can better the breed, uh, whether it be a pointer, whether it be a setter, whether it be a Brittany, whether it be a German short hair, whatever the pointing breed is, uh, the, the main purpose of a field trial is to better the breed. And sometimes that gets lost, but ultimately that's, that is the ultimate purpose of a field trial. So we can always continue bettering the breed uh, bettering the ge genetics and uh, just working as, as best we can for that superior animal. Typically at a field trial, uh, the dogs are drawn out in what's called a brace. There's two dogs per brace and uh, there's, there's two handlers, two dogs, and two judges and uh, you know as the brace is turned loose, uh, there's a starting line, the brace is turned loose the dogs are allowed to hunt through the course. And uh, it, it's really interesting to see uh, uh, how the dogs, uh, uh, I mean, they're competitors. So when they have a brace made out there, uh, it's, you see that competitive light come on. And, uh, and they, really, they really will compete against the other dog. And it's, uh, it's, it's very uh, interesting to see that. As the brace goes out, you have two judges, uh, one judge for each dog. There's also two scouts, uh, and the, the purpose of the scouts is just to help the handler uh, stay in location with the dog, uh, keep the dog located, uh, help the handler understand where the dog uh, is, and at times actually ride out and, and bring the dog around back to the front of the handler. Uh, the judges are, are there's a, it, 
It depends on uh, what the steak is. You know, a puppy, for instance, they're, they're looking for natural qualities. They're looking for uh, puppies that show independence, that show a lofty gait uh, in class. And, uh, and, and one that's independent enough that'll get out and actually hunt and not just run a path or run a road. Uh, but they're, they're looking for something that has na the natural abilities to move to the next level. The derby stakes are, are stakes that uh, where the bird work uh, becomes in play. And uh, uh, you know, there's a little difference in, in what people are typically looking for in a fall derby, which is an er early season derby versus a spring derby, which is late season. And uh, a fall derby, uh, you know, the dogs should be a very athletic dog, very classy, uh, very light of foot that runs uh, very appeasing to the eye. Uh, that can locate and point game. And then later in the season, uh, as that, that derby dog progresses in his training, uh, judges are going to be looking for that dog. Still that nice, lofty, uh, very classy uh, moving dog that, that's um, uh, ranging at an adequate range uh, that will not only point birds but allow a handler to go in and, and do what we call uh, being steady to flush and shot, uh, which is flushing the bird in front of the dog and shooting, shooting a blank pistol. Uh, in the shooting dog stakes, uh, they're looking for uh, a much more mature dog, a dog that uh, that runs an adequate race uh, as far as its range, uh, that's that's fast, that uh, hunts the objectives uh, in a smart way, that can locate and point birds, and handles birds with impeccable style and impeccable manners. And by manners, I mean pointing the bird, uh, allowing the handler to flush the bird, uh, shoot, fire the gun and come back and collar the dog to move it on uh, to go further down the course. Do you have passion? Do you have drive? Of course you do. But do you spend your days doing what makes you happy? If you're not doing what you love, you're wasting your time. Top Tier Canine is not just a dog trainer school, it's a business school. We seek those looking to join the pack. We are driven, we are passionate, and we are strengthened by each successful graduate. Time to work some dogs. I need you to get me out of the country, out of here, away. All in exchange for a sip of coffee? Yeah. It's Black Rifle Coffee. Let's try some. Why don't you head over to BlackRifleCoffee.com and get yourself set up with a Coffee Club subscription. So I know you feel protected in the suit. Don't make any sudden movements without me there giving specific instructions. You got it? Dogs love it. <laughs> I heard that you just bought insurance online. You really should work with somebody like Tom who has the experience and knows what he's doing. Oh, really? Safari Insurance is an independent agency. They represent companies like Auto Owners Insurance. They guide you by showing you all the coverages to keep you safe. Then you decide what fits you best. They guide, you decide. You know, a lot of, a lot of the uh, events are an hour long and, and these dogs are true athletes. And they're, I mean, they're giving you everything they've got for a solid hour or longer in some instances. They run in all terrains, they run in all weather conditions. Proper conditioning is so important because of that. But they give you so much in the time that they're on the ground that uh, you know proper nutrition, proper recovery uh, is just so important uh, to get them ready to go the next time. Training time, it really depends. It really depends on, on the dog a lot of times. Uh, uh, some dogs develop really quickly. Uh, some dogs take an extraordinary long time. And uh, uh, the key is understanding the dog, reading the dog, and training at the dog's pace. I think a lot of people uh, make the mistake of, of having their training time and trying to force a dog's training into their time. And uh, every stage of, of a dog's training 
Uh, if you understand how to read a dog, you will understand when a dog's ready to move from one level to the next. They'll let you know that. And it and it and it's, and the other thing that comes into play, as far as the timing of, of training, is is how much time uh, the individual has allowed. When a, you know when a dog's ready to move from one level to the next, there needs to be a lot of repetitive uh, action there. And uh, uh, in the case of uh, amateurs like me who work a full-time job, it's not always easy to be there to work a dog every day when he really needs it. So you really have to be able to carve out that time. And uh, that's an advantage that a pro trainer has over an amateur uh, because they're doing that every day. And that repetitiveness uh that is required is, is just so important. And if you don't have time to do it, it stretches out uh, the actual training time. And, and a lot of times it, it, uh, you miss some opportunity that otherwise you wouldn't miss. If a trainer and a handler isn't uh, committed, then the, pro the end product is, is going to be mediocre. It's, you know, it's, it's like anything in life. The, uh, you know, the more commitment, the more passion, uh, the better the product. And it's no different in bird dogs. I'm Jeff Minder with Top Tier Canine, and we are the professional's choice for folks out in the world who want to come in and learn to start and run their own dog training business and learn to train those dogs. One of the biggest challenges that we have, and we see it everywhere, veterinarians tell us about it, groomers tell us about it, other dog trainers tell us about it, is that when a human being begins to treat a dog like the dog is a human being, it's called anthropomorphic behavior. It's where we put human characteristics on non-human objects. Uh, in this instance, we're just talking about dogs, but people do it to everything, and, and usually it's other animals. But in dogs, they'll look at a dog and say, well, the dog's scarfing up that food, he must still be hungry. Uh, dogs don't have the ability to tell you they're not hungry. And if you feed a dog until they stop eating, then you're doing a huge disservice to that dog and you're gonna create a very obese dog that has all kinds of problems with their hips, with their elbows, you know, with, with diabetes, with, with you know, sugar issues, with all kinds of problems. So people who look at a dog and act or treat that dog like it's a human being are actually abusing the dog. Dogs are better than humans and they deserve to be treated like a dog. And that's by being clear and concise with what we expect from the dog, realizing a dog lives in the absolute now. They don't care what happened a second ago. They're not thinking about what's happening a second from now. They're simply focused on getting your praise, whether that's a pet, whether that's a piece of food, or whether that's a toy. They're simply opportunistic predators looking for that reward. And you've got to treat them that way by being clear, by rewarding what you want them to do, by correcting what you don't want them to do in a way that's fair, in a way that's compassionate for the animal, but stop treating dogs like they're human beings. That's where most people make their mistakes. I'm Jeff Mender at Top Tier Canine. We have the Academy for Dog Trainers that's the professional's choice for entering other areas, whether they're lawyers, whether they're doctors, whether even licensed veterinarians wanting to come and learn to train dogs and, and help owners with their dogs. And by learning to get owners to treat their dogs like real dogs and not like human beings, they can solve the majority of problems that exist out there in households uh, with unruly pets. Uh, so come to Top Tier Canine and check us out and we'll see you soon. Are you tired of the same old toolbox that doesn't keep your gear organized, clean, or protected? Then you need a cam locker. Our exclusively designed aluminum toolboxes have hefty T-handles, insulated lids, and feature the cam locker system. The toughest aluminum toolbox lock. Proudly manufactured in the USA, cam locker will be the best and last toolbox you will ever own. So keep your tools and gear secure with a cam locker toolbox. The key to security. Feel like the season just got started? Well, there's no reason to stop hunting now. At Highland Hunting, you can enjoy a great upland experience through the end of March. Located in Southeast Iowa, we have over 1,200 acres of diverse upland habitat with the best flying and wildest birds you'll find at any upland outfitter. 
Our incredible staff and great accommodations let us show you a true Iowa Upland experience at Highland Hunting. Give us a call and schedule your next adventure today. No matter what you feed, sometimes your dog needs a little help to keep them at the top of their game. For some dogs, it can even mean the chance to just live a normal, healthy life. Our kinetic supplements are formulated to meet specific needs to get and keep your dog at optimal health and performance. Your dog will love them and you'll be amazed at the difference they make. If your dog needs an extra boost, give Kinetic a try. We build it for our dogs and you'll love it for yours. Dogs, uh, dog people are the best people and dogs have a lot to do with that. Uh, and the people have a lot to do with that. I mean, they're good people before, you know, before they, but probably before they ever own a dog. But, uh, you know, when you work with a dog, uh, I, I've never liked comparing a dog to a human being, but there's so many aspects that cross over from training dogs to rearing kids, if you will. There's that, always the encouragement, the development, the di discipline when necessary. Uh, at the right time and at the right in the right manner, that uh, creates that connection and of love between a dog just as it does a child. Uh, good dog people, you know, you'll you'll see when they walk by their dogs, the dogs are happy to see them. They want to be with them, and you know those people have a good positive connection with their dogs. They really uh, love that that handler, that owner, and uh, there's there's mutual respect. There, there is absolutely a bond, and, and you, you see it in the field. It's so, uh, when, when it's working, it's magic. When you see a, uh, a handler and a dog that are connected to one another run through a, a course at a field trial, and, and, you, and you, can, you can just see, it, it just flows so smoothly. Uh, the dog is always, he's doing his business, but he's always, he's always got his handler in mind as well, where his handler is located. He's, he's always swinging to where the handler wants him to swing to. But when you see a dog that's out there that's in tune with its handler, that is, is just bent on pleasing his handler, and the handler is doing everything he can to show the positive aspects of that dog, it, it's just it's magical, and it's one of the most exciting things in the sport to see. Probably second to the second to the dogs, uh, and, and and in a lot of cases even uh, more prevalent than the dogs is the community of field trialing. Uh, it's a wonderful fraternity. Uh, as I field trialed uh, over the 50 years, uh, there's not many places I could go in this country and have a problem, and there's not somebody I could call and have immediate help. Uh, it, it is a, it's a tight knit family. Some of the most, uh, the best people in the world are, are, are involved in field trials. It is a fraternity, and, and you see that when you come to a field trial. You, 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 you see that uh, displayed in, in, in handlers, trainers helping each other out. Uh, and and it, it is just uh, the friends that you make uh, through the years, uh, they're just lifelong friends. And, and it's, a, it's just a fraternity like no other. Culture and tradition play a huge part of our sport. Uh, and I would, I would like to see it more so. Uh, you, know, you know, when I got into field trial and there were, there were just these iconic people, these iconic dogs, and, and it was a gentleman's sport. And, uh, and, and to some degree today, it, it remains a gentleman's sport, and it, and it can be a gentleman's sport with male and female handlers. Uh, it's, you know, when I say gentleman, what does that mean? That means being cordial, being polite, uh, being willing to help one another out, and, uh, uh, you know, basically living the golden rule. If we can just work to keep the culture pure to what it was in the beginning and what it has been, and what it needs to remain, uh, that'll be the best thing we can do to leave a legacy of our sport that's, that we love so much. If someone wanted to get involved with SBHA, uh, we have a website, uh, southernbirdhuntersassociation.com, uh, and we also have a Facebook page, Southern Bird Hunters Association. 
uh, and we would uh, welcome anybody that would ever want to get in, in, involved in our sport. Uh, uh, if they wanted to reach out, uh, my contact information is very accessible and I would love to talk to anybody that would ever uh, have an interest in, in participating in our organization. You know, the sport of field trialing has a long and rich history dating back to the late 1800s and it's encouraging to see organizations like the Southern Bird Hunters Association continuing the legacy of the sport. If you've got a bird dog, I'd encourage you to find a local field trialing club to get involved with. And if you don't, well, there's plenty of activities and sports out there to bring you and your dog a little bit closer. Well, that's all the time we've got left. I hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll see you next time on Unleashed.